season's greeting. I'm Sony Puama, lecturer, Department of English, Vidyashram College, Mysore. English, needless to say, is a universal language. It's also a language of learning and excellence. Alongside, it's also a language of pride and prejudice. Pride for knowing that language proficiently and prejudice for the same language being an alien language or a foreign language. Today, here in this session, we are going to break that kind of prejudice related to one. So, how are we doing it? Here is the one. What are we learning today? We will understand poetry, we will understand prose and also the prime methodology to score the grades and Brahmastra to score high. And now, coming to the very first or the prime point that is poetry. Poetry is anybody's favorite. Let's reckon back to our childhood days when the poetry was in the form of rhymes. How did we enjoy that, didn't we? So this is how a poetry is derived into a rhyme and the flows go. And the rhyme goes like this. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. So here the poem is constructed into melody. Every poem is a sort of music. Poetry is melody. Melody is music, music is love and love is divine. So do poetry as well. So it's very essential that we understand poem not only as a piece of writing which implies the intensity of feelings and emotion alongside, it's also a game of music. So how are we doing that? This is how I'm going to help you. Let's say hello to poetry. Hello, poetry. What good more to start than with that of the poem of a mother? Every classroom, every classroom, every teacher should make it a prime point to the students that they will have to have the text with them. Your eyeball should roll over the text as a teacher reads or recites the poem. And every poem, as I have told you prior, it's a music less than any poem as it is constructed. So let's say hello to poetry. And now there is a paradigm given. There is an example given. How do we recite a poem? Let me correct you. We normally don't read a poem. We recite. There is much difference between reading, narrating and reciting. And recitation of poetry with melody is essential as we are living. So here, saying hello to this poetry, let's start the poem with that of a mother. Please roll your eyes down onto the lines. My mother kept a garden, a garden of the heart. She planted all the good things that gave my life a start. She turned me to the sunshine and encouraged me to dream, fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. I am my mother's garden. I am her legacy. I hope she feels the love reflected back from me. Here's a life given to the poem. Poetry is divine. So we have to understand every poetry can fill life to the concrete way of education. Every text, every text of any of the high schools, be it for degree, be it for PUC, be it anywhere around across the globe, how much ever the literary aspects are, it all goes with this poetry of melody. This is one paradigm wherein the melody goes with the poem and also the other way around. Poem Again, it's not just a piece of writing wherein only emotions are filled. Every comma, every full stop, every question mark, every ellipsis narrates a story within a poem and also the musical note as well. As this illustration shows you the one, poem is nothing but music. Why don't we feel life to that, isn't it? And also, it's not only the melodious poem that reflects in every text. There are free verses wherein the poetry goes with a flow, only with emotions, less of melody and music. Such poems are much in our literary text. That's what we study in our common way of education. Here's one for you, just like you recite. The famous personality a notable personality, Rabindranath Tagore, His Highness is a Bengali literary writer where Gitanjali is in his closet. 
he writes one of the most famous poem known as let my country awake this was written during the british crown during the colonized india and the emotions are sprouted here we cannot add melody but keep that in mind we can add music but it only goes with emotion let's fill emotion to the lines of rabindranath tagore so your eyes on there just like you recite what we call it as because it's just a recitation with emotions you need to keep keen on every punctuation because here you can see the poetry runs with a stream of consciousness and a poem with stream of consciousness is nothing but it runs with emotion here we go where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arms toward perfection where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom my father let my country awake the emotions run with lines and again here every ellipsis every full stop every comma narrates the rhythm narrates the patho of being in servitude under the british crown a request to every teacher we don't have to just recite the poem as it is meant to be let's fill life to that concrete way of education poetry is meant for survival as i have told you love is music music is melody and, and melody is again a poetry and the other way round so that's all about poetry and what makes it more important in poetry is the tone the tone you use each line is given life galloping on to the next we are here again to understand prose don't you all think that we hold prejudice against the prose also so today we will pose the prose what is prose all about as this divines of course as this derives against it a derivation of speech into writing anything can be a prose a novel is a prose oh, an autobiography is a prose anything that you narrate a story is a prose but how far did we understand this it's a wrong conception that every prose has to start with once upon a time and end with and they lived happily ever after it's not a fairy tale yes a fairy tale is also a prose what is that how is that we are reading this with expressions and tone emotions and melody and with sequence you will have to narrate the prose not every prose is a story but we can make every story a narration to remember we are too very fortunate to be there in this 21st century where everything is so much accessible and we are unfortunate also that we are deprived of that every student every student has to understand the essentiality of learning english as a language and also as a subject that's a main quint essential thing that you will learn and you will derive life out of that so galloping on to the next so what is that quint essential points to remember every prose should be narrating if i have to give you a paradigm or an example i would say you to imagine imagine the beauty and the beast the beauty of course it can be a princess and the beast huge hefty crude and rude you got the imagination so every prose comes with an imagination it's not subtle at all it's not boring at all it's in our hand especially in the teacher's hand to make every prose class to make every prose of the classes to go forward interestingly so that each stakeholder understands what prose exactly it is 
I repeat, it's not only that starts with a once upon a time, gone are the days. Now, even a novel starts in a very obscure and abrupt manner. But still, we understand what is the story all about. So that's the prose for you. And also read as if you are narrating. We have to narrate it and punctuate wherever necessary. If I have to give an example, if you don't punctuate, the complete arena of sentence takes a haphazard mode, isn't it? So for example, let's eat grandma. So if there is no punctuation, we can be omnivorous also, we can be carnivorous also. But if we punctuate, let's eat grandma. So here it's where the punctuation plays a pivotal role in narration. And critically acclaim in the perspective of a narrator and then opining personally. We cannot change the perception of the narrator because it's his perception. But yes, seldom are those who normally take that to their opinion and imbibe one. We have to be that. We have to understand the prose and delve deeper to the tone of the narration. And reading between the lines will enhance the answer anyhow, isn't it? So we have to understand the symbol. We have to understand the theme. We have to understand all that is important to understand a narration. The first thing you have to have is patience. To read a poetry, to read a prose, you need to have patience for patience is virtue. That's what it implies in every of its circumstances. Galloping on to the next. We all know what to write, but how to write is a big term question. Qualitative answer is very much essential. That would be very much suffice with a qualitative answer that goes with introduction. First, start your answer with introducing the title of the poem to the reader and that of course it should be the evaluator. Start that with the poem title, only the title and next come to the poet's initial. Mind you, restrict yourself with that of this and also the theme. You have to wrap it up within five lines to the introduction. Your introduction pays a bridge to the next of the synopsis. Galloping, here you find synopsis. Only next line to the synopsis, you will have the quotation, preferably the first couplets within the quotes. Your answer should be very impressive. And for that, synopsis again builds a bridge between you and the evaluator. And for that, which paves the way as it is? It paves the quotation. You will have to learn the first two couplets by heart or you have to learn it by rote and preferably the first couplets within the quotes that should fall amidst of the paper while you immediately start the synopsis and next the explanation of the theme with the representation of theme motives and symbols any literature wouldn't want any summaries at all it all wants your opinion the theme that you understand, the motive that you understand, the symbols that you represent. And here it's no way different. Synopsis wants the qualitative answer and that should follow only after paraphrase accordingly. Your paras will highlight your intellect. How intellectually smart you are is all that this will imbibe in you. And Respectively, the paraphrasing is much essential. That actually builds the gap between the measuring the equivalent conclusion as well as accordingly paraphrasing. And with these, we come to an conclusion. And the conclusion is just the message and nothing else to bother about. Conclusion is the best way to pave your message to the reader. That's where you acquire marks as it does with the introduction again. You are paving a bridge between the introduction as well as the conclusion. So what all the quintessential points that you ought to remember? That's the message of the poem. Every poem comes with a message and the message of the poem is nothing but the theme that you personally do so and the intention of the poet. Every time the perception of the poet pay plays an important role in every of the concepts that takes up to the poetry. And lastly, the closure quotation. 
as you have done that to the introductory part wherein you have written the quotation for the introduction or the synopsis the same you will have to follow with that of the closure as well here it's not only the first impression becomes the best impression the closure impression also becomes the best impression and the most important part wherein it actually gives a conclusive that's what we call as critical acclaim critical acclaim is where you are free to denote your ideas how is that you're going to do the first point states your conception envelops the answer that should envelop the answer your perception relating to that of the poet the author or the dramatist you have to envelop the answer by claiming i personally opine that's your opinion this serves as a garnering or a garnishing to the delicacy that you write alone prime methodology wouldn't groom your writing alongside you will have to have brahmastra what is brahmastra brahmastra is the mightiest weapon that you find in indian epics and mythologies what is it all about what does that do that that's all about the legible writing which is a good start you will have to have a legible writing of course unlike me and then paraphrasing is very very essential along with the paraphrasing make sure that you highlight the important sentences if you are sure enough that whatever the quotations that you have asserted or written should be underlined very neatly and legibly and please don't overdo that next galloping on to after highlights that's all about the quotation you will have to quote two or more quotations from poetry prose and drama whatever it is imbibed up to you will have to garnish brahmastra serves as a coriander to garnish the delicacy so that it tastes even more relishing and with this it comes to all conclusion i conclude with the assertions of the famous poet john keats a thing of beauty is a joy forever here's vidyashram for you standard retained for life Sayonara.